that govern the operation of, of this device. And, and, and ultimately, when we, when we look at, at what goes on, it ultimately leads us back uh, to the, the fundamental aspects of the physical world, um, primarily uh, quantum mechanics um, and quantum mechanical theory. So uh, this is night vision is certainly no different. So uh, the videos that you saw were me filming uh, with my iPhone, actually, so the, the quality isn't exactly... Um, as, as good as what you'd really see if you're, you're looking through these, these devices, but uh, filming through uh, the night vision goggles that we wear uh, when we fly at night. The, these goggles are known as the Anvis 9s, the uh, fairly new technology. I believe it's um, a Generation 3, a little enhanced Generation 3 device. And I'll talk a little bit about the generations, but I wanted to talk about just basically how a night vision device works. And there are really two types of devices, and we'll just talk about them. The, the first type of device is, is what they call a, a thermal device. A thermal device. Um, and and this, this looks at a wavelengths, very lo long wavelengths in the infrared wavelength. And of course, this is, you know, when we talk about heat and thermal vision and all that. This is actually not what I'm talking about today. I'm actually talking about a concept known as image, image intensification or an image intensifier. Um, and what this does is this gathers ambient light um, at night, ambient light, uh, visible light, and what we call near, um, near infrared light. So uh, on the longer, uh, longer wavelengths, but not um, quite into the, the full-on um, infrared range. So uh, basically it's visible light and uh, near IR. And there are two there are two types of, of image intensifiers. The first type um, has a, a little infrared um, or emits near infrared light, so it's it's basically invisible to the human eye, and it emits infrared light. And then inside of it, there's an infrared detector. That light bounces off of the object, comes into the detector, and the detector um, uh, the detector then detects that light and um, there's some, some sort of software in there that, that then uh, produces an image and we can see the image. And these are what basically the, the Generation Zero technology is all about is it's what's called an active, an active device where it actually actively emits infrared light and then that light is reflected and then it, it, it or near IR light, that light is then reflected back and you can see. Well, this definitely has some distinct disadvantages. First of all, it, it emits um, light. And if somebody else can see in the near IR range, has another one of these devices, then obviously uh, you're lit up and everyone can see you. Uh, and it also obviously takes a lot of battery power, uh, more components, um, and so on and so forth. Now, the devices, the, the pictures, that I, the videos that I showed you at the beginning um, actually use what are called passive devices. And that is to say that they don't emit light. They don't actually have a little emitter. Now, they can detect <coughs> light, near-infrared light that is emitted, <coughs> but they don't emit their own. They don't have their own light source that can be emitted. So we call them passive. And how a passive or how image intensification works is, is really interesting, and it works on something uh, known as the, the, photo, the photoelectric effect. And this is actually something that Albert Einstein explained in uh, 1905. He wrote a paper, he actually wrote three papers in 1905, one on special relativity, one on Brownian motion, and one on the photoelectric effect. Um, and he actually won uh, the Nobel Prize not from his paper on relativity. That's kind of interesting. A lot of people think that. But he did not win his paper or his Nobel Prize on um, his work that he did on uh, special relativity. It was actually uh, the other papers, the Brownian motion, uh, photoelectric effect. Um, and I believe it was a photoelectric effect that won him the prize. Um, and basically what it was was back then um, they, they um, would take a metal and they would charge the metal. They'd put some electro a, more, a little more electrons than the metal would normally have, put a charge on that metal. And then they'd shine ultraviolet light at the metal, and uh, what would happen was um, electrons would be emitted from that metal. And so then what they did is they said, okay, well, electrons are being emitted. 
um, and those electrons are called photoelectrons. So what they did is they turned up the intensity of the light. So there was more of that ultraviolet light, but the wavelength stayed the same. It was just more intense. There's just more light with the same wavelength, and more electrons were emitted. But when they assessed uh, what the energy of these emitted electrons were, the energy didn't change, even though the intensity increased. And this was kind of one of those things that was really hard to explain. Well, uh, Albert Einstein came along, and um, he actually um, looked at some of the work done before him in 1900 by a guy by the by a guy by the name of Max Planck. Uh, and you guys are probably familiar with uh, Planck's constant, um, which actually was the birth of quantum theory. Well, anyway, he he realized that it was actually the wavelength of light. And that was, was, was particularly important. He realized that you could increase the intensity of a light, but if the wavelength was still the same, you wouldn't really increase the energy of those electrons that are being emitted. But what you could do is you could decrease the wavelength of the light. It would have more energy, and it would basically strike the electron with more energy, and the electron would fly off with more energy. And um, it was this relationship between you know, wavelength and energy that then other people um, used, uh, you, uh, basically it was a stepping stone on the way to the, the, the quantum theory that, that we know today, um, uh, the photoelectric effect. Well, this device, this type of night vision, works on that same principle. Um, so what we have out here is, we'll just say this is our objective lens of our device, and um, I have a little house out here, whatever I'm looking at, and it's dark out, I can't really see, but there are some photons coming in. There are a couple of photons coming in, not very many, we can't really see it very well, and they come in through this, this objective lens. Okay, everybody can see that objective lens, they come in through there. And what they do is, I actually have a plate of metal inside of the device, and it, um, it, it has a potential across it, it has, some, it has some charge to it, some electrons, and these photons strike the metal, and the electrons, so the photons strike, they give the electrons energy, and the electrons are then emitted. So I'm going to draw a little E negative here. Electrons are emitted from that metal. And that's called, a, 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 well, well, we'll talk about the components here in just a little bit. As long as everybody's good with the charged plate, the electrons strike, uh, photons strike. So I have photons here. They strike the plate. Electrons are emitted. And then I have something called a microchannel plate. And what it is is it's a fiber optic plate with lots, uh, lots of tiny, tiny little channels in there. And if you were to look at it, just be these tiny little holes. And the electrons hit and go through those channels, and they kind of bounce around a little bit inside of those channels, and they excite atoms in there. And when the atoms are excited, the atoms then release more electrons. So maybe if one electron comes in, and now I have you know, 5 or 10 or 15 electrons coming out, and I essentially... Um, I have essentially made lots of electrons here. And then I have a, a phosphorus screen here, a, a phosphorus screen. And the electrons strike the phosphorus screen, and then photons are emitted from that phosphorus screen. And of course, photons are light that we can see. And if my eye is here, we'll say, that's my eye, it can now see these, these photons. So you can see that just a couple of photons came in, they were turned to, basically turned into electrons, electrons bounced around, made more electrons from um, uh, uh, exciting atoms, then all those electrons smashed into the phosphor screen, and all these other photons were released, and I essentially intensified the image. I can see more. And that is how um, a night vision system actually works. That's the physics of it. And uh, in subsequent videos, we'll talk about the components, the individual components, in a little more detail. So hopefully you guys found that interesting, and we'll talk to you later.